Now, Chandra, he was calling out for political commitment. Therefore, I'm particularly happy that we have a representative from the political side, actually from our own Norwegian government here today. I'm certain that he's more than ready to discuss the challenges of a rapid and just transition with Chandra and the rest of the speakers panel shortly. But first, we are going to give Tony Christian Tiller, State Secretary in the Norwegian Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, and representing the Conservative Party, some minutes to explain why he is optimistic about the future of energy and the energy transition. And as usual, there will be a short Q&A session afterwards, so don't hesitate to use the Slido code ET Visions Future. You're already doing that quite well. And I'm, as I've told you, I'm going to save some questions for the discussion later on. So now, please, Tony Taylor, the scene is yours. Dear all, it's a great pleasure to attend this webinar on visions for the future, generously hosted by our leading technological university and my alumni, MTNU. My name is Tony Christian Tillet, and I'm State Secretary for the Conservative Party, HEIDE, in the Norwegian Ministry of Petroleum and Energy. I was invited to speak at the original Energy Transition Conference back in March. That seems like a long time ago. Since then, the COVID-19 pandemic has not only influenced our daily lives, how we organize our work, it has also influenced and disrupted global energy markets. However, there are reasons for optimism. According to the low emissions scenario of Stadtkraft, renewable energy has continued to grow even during and after the outbreak of the virus. That serves as a bridge to our topic of the day, visions for the future. The future is difficult to predict. Some would even say impossible. Nevertheless, we need a starting point and we need to have an idea of where we are heading. What we do know is the change is happening faster than ever before. Driven by the need to cut climate gas emissions and to fuel the growth of a growing economy. We are experiencing a transformation in the way we produce, distribute and consume energy. Our government's ambition is to achieve a low emissions society by 2050 where we have reduced emissions between 90 and 95 percent compared to levels in 1990. That's a bold target and there's still some unanswered questions of how do we get there? What technologies will prevail? What new technologies will need to be developed? What's the best overall approach to achieve a low emissions society? Perhaps we should even expect the unexpected. There are many items on the energy transition menu, and I only have time to mention a few. I see three main reasons for optimism. First, we have the resources. In Norway, we're blessed with abundant natural resources. We're known for our considerable oil and gas resources, but renewable energy our, makes sure our domestic electric, electricity supply consists almost entirely of flexible hydropower. And not only that, we have excellent wind resources, both onshore and offshore. Currently, there's a lot of momentum on hydrogen. So this June, our government launched a new national hydrogen strategy. The document addresses both production and use of hydrogen in Norway and internationally. The maritime sector is important to Norway and together with heavy transportation and industrial processes, we believe hydrogen can be 
a key contributor in these important sectors in Norway. I'll jump quickly to my second reason for optimism, which is technology. If we are to reach our objective of a low emissions society, we must successfully develop, adapt and implement new technologies in several areas. Technology is absolutely essential to reaching our goals of a low emissions society. Some technological improvements may be minor to existing known technologies. Others may be truly groundbreaking and bold innovations. In any case, I think we need them all. So please allow me to mention a couple of examples. Last week, my minister Tina Bru attended the opening of a new battery lab at Kjellö just outside Oslo. The demand for batteries is expected to grow significantly in the years to come. And much of this growth is driven by electric mobility. This is an area that's familiar to many Norwegians. Electrification is happening as we speak and the transportation sector is very important to Norwegian targets and we really are leading the way in electric vehicles and also electric car ferries and other examples from the transportation sector. So just a minor improvement in battery capacity can have a great impact. The second example I would like to mention is offshore wind. In August 2019, our government decided to support the development of High Wind Tampen, a floating offshore wind farm with a total 2.3 billion Norwegian kroner uh, support from the state enterprise Enova. When it's completed, it will be the world's first and I believe largest floating offshore wind farm, supplying renewable power to offshore oil and gas installations. The High Wind Tampen project will contribute to further development of floating offshore wind technology and reduce, hopefully, reduce the cost for future floating offshore wind farms. That's a groundbreaking project, truly demonstrating the project, the, excuse me, the potential of offshore wind in really deep waters. I could go on and mention a lot more examples, but no matter how different our starting points may be, research and technology development will be essential for all aspects of the energy transition, combined with policy, of course. The third and last ingredient I would like to add is not technology nor a source of energy, but people. In times where digitalization artificial intelligence, machine learning and robots are buzzwords and talk of the town. We should never lose track of the fact that we need the right people with the right competence to manage the energy transition. There's a limit to what computers and machines can do. That's why we need creative and innovative people to solve challenges and clear the path towards a low emissions society. Furthermore, when recruiting, we have to make sure we get the best talents. Our broad energy industry is still in 2020 somewhat unbalanced when it comes to gender, and we certainly need more women. That was also the background for my minister's decision last week to organize a working lunch for women in the energy industry. Daryl, my 10 minutes is about up. Research, technology, people, all key ingredients in our vision for the future and our path to the low emission society. Achieving this will take time and hard work from everyone, industry, research communities, authorities, students, universities, citizens. Our government will support this transition. So dear friends, climate change knows no borders and international cooperation is key. Our common challenge is cutting emissions while ensuring affordable energy for all. That's a tall order and failure is not on the menu. Thank you all for your attention.
Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, that was very interesting. And I know that you are, yeah, there you are. You are currently in Trondheim. I have to add, I'm in Oslo, so that's why we're not together. So hello. And now we can see Tony. And I think we're going to have a camera zoom into you because you're the one in focus right now. I hope you're enjoying your visit at NTNU. And we could see a couple of others uh, right next to you again. We're getting back to them later on. Now, you mentioned a couple of examples of technology being developed in Norway at the moment, such as hydrogen, the new battery lab at Kjellert, High Wind Thumpen. These are all big projects things to be proud of. However, you did not bring up CCS, carbon capture and storage. Uh, that is a technology that I guess your party would be very interested in both developing and implementing, not to mention the government would be interested in that as well. So there are a couple of CCS projects um, going on at the moment, research and innovation projects. And I know that they are eagerly waiting for use of continued financial support. But I also know that you won't be able to say anything about that in particular right now, as the state budget for 2021 is in the making right now. But in general, now this was a long introduction for a rather short question. Do you think that we can manage without CCS? Um... No, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and thank you for your question. Um, it was in my, it was in the original manuscript, but I only had ten minutes, and I'm, I was pretty sure uh, CCS would come up in the dialogue anyway. So um, I, I left it out as a, a deliberate teaser for the for our dialogue. Um, and um, you're absolutely right. We're about three weeks away now from. Um, from uh, when we put our uh, state budget proposition forward to, to Parliament. Um, and uh, as we have said now for quite some time, we, we have been working on, uh, on an investment decision uh, material for, for, um, for Parliament that we uh, hopefully can, can put forward. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's, really, it's been really interesting to listen to, to the previous um, um, speakers we had here and I think it just serves to prove the the difference and variety in in uh, take India on the one hand and Norway on the other it's, they're, they're quite different uh, starting points and, and challenges that we are facing and for our part uh, I think um, uh, we're already there where we have a lot of renewable energy we're, we're rapidly um, electrifying our transportation sector. There's a lot of work left to do, but we really also have to take a hard look at process industry uh, and to decarbonize uh, natural gas and what's going to be left in the energy sector. So, yes, I think across governments and for, for many, many years now, Norway has supported um, and funded research uh, on CCS. And um, I think we're all hoping for... Uh, for a real breakthrough um, sometime soon. Stopping now would probably not be a good idea then. That is what I'm I'm hearing uh, from you now. I think that would be a politically a very uh, challenging um, proposition, yes. Yes. <laughs> good, so, but, but, but as you said, you, you had another manuscript probably with, you know, if you had some more time, you would have talked about this nevertheless, but it, this is not, only about CCS, of course, and we have a lot of questions and, and different uh, angles to look at. Uh, before I'm going to re-invite the other speakers, I would like to just um, uh, convey a couple of comments from uh, Slido, from the audience. Uh, and there's someone here who said, did I understand it correctly, offshore wind for the oil and gas industry? And yes, that is correct, isn't it? Because uh, you are about to electrify with offshore wind the production on the platforms, isn't that so? That's absolutely so. And um, I think that's, it's a project that I think the, the company is developing is really, really proud of and that we as a government is, is proud to support because uh, it, re it really is uh, a great technological breakthrough uh, and also serves as a, a, a bridge between uh, our uh, oil and gas sector and the future of renewables. 
I, I think in all these scenarios, I, I mean, we could discuss up and down uh, when will we have peak oil, uh, when uh, when can we reach net zero, um, and I have no doubt in my mind that, that oil, oil and gas resources will will become less uh, important in the future. Uh, however, uh, until we get there, I think uh, it's a really good idea to uh, to have the most carbon efficient and the most environmentally friendly, if I can use that term, uh, speaking of petroleum resources. Uh, so, uh, so the idea is simply to uh, generate electricity for one hour oil and gas installations from floating offshore wind uh, turbines, uh, and that will lower emissions from the production. Uh, Obviously, it won't solve the problem of emissions uh, at, at the end user, uh, but that's that's one way of uh, of uh, reducing emissions from our uh, uh, petroleum industry. And uh, uh, the beautiful thing is, then we can help reduce costs, and then we can use this uh, technology in other areas as well. So um, I think it's a great project.